n plus infinity, maybe also equal to infinity. Then we had lambda, which was a parameter between zero and plus infinity. And uh, then we said that, that we had uh, that we had omega open subset of our n open. And if you remember, we consider a function, a weight function from zero plus infinity uh, with values in, we said we include the zero plus infinity. And uh, then we defined the space, Mori space, weighted more generalized Mori space. So we put the weight here, we put the P here, and we put omega, which was the set of functions F from omega to R. You remember we use this symbol, R to the omega means a function from omega to R. And then we want also F to be measurable. Of course. And then we wanted also the number that we defined as F plus infinity W P omega to be finite. We are, if you remember, F plus infinity, we will write this many times today. E omega was a supremum X R E N. X, I wanted point omega and R, I wanted the number which is a strictly positive. Okay, what? Here is the weight. And then here you have BLP norm on the ball, center X radius R, intersection omega. OK, and we also decided to call this one as seminorm, well, it's seminorm in case W is identically equal to zero. In all other cases, it's, it's a norm. F, um, we said M, W, P, omega. OK, so <clears throat> if W is not identically, identically, equal to zero, we have a norm. Norm. Otherwise, a seminar, but it's a little ridiculous in the sense that F is identical to zero in that case, if W is identical to zero. We wanted to make some examples, our, our preferred examples, OK? So uh, we start with the first example, which is uh, the power R to minus lambda. So if example one, if you wish, if we choose so this is the end of the last lectures. If we choose WR in this form, R to the minus lambda, then we obtain that the space, Mori space, W, P omega equal. Well, it's a set of functions for which this is finite. This supremum here is finite, which I have just underlined, with the choice R to the minus lambda. But this is what we have already seen yesterday. This is nothing else that R minus lambda, comma plus infinity, the omega, introduced yesterday. OK. Then I want to make another, let's say, favorite example. And uh, let rho, positive number. And we set. So W lambda comma rho, if you wish, are equivalent. So again, R to the minus lambda in the case that R belongs to the interval zero. And then I want to set it equal to zero if R, if R, sorry, not R, 
belongs to classic uh, So in two words for a positive and uh, we have roughly speaking this graph. Then here, well this point here is the graph is missing. Okay. And uh, you see that this um, weight, let's say W lambda rho, is actually zero on the half line. That's why I wanted the, the, to allow in the definition that W was also zero. Okay. And uh, if we do this, if we choose this, then the more by definition, by the way, no rho, the omega, is nothing else but uh, what we have seen yesterday as n. So yesterday's example falls in, that's our specific cases, hence yesterday's examples. The more classes, spaces if you wish, we have introduced yesterday. Are special cases of generalized more spaces with uh, these two choices? Maybe we also graph this one. Our weights maybe c is out to the minus lambda. Okay. Both functions are decreasing, by the way. It's interesting to note, maybe this will be useful all later on. Next, I want to introduce another example. Now introduce, introduce another class, uh, which is going to be the intersection. So we take, again, a row and zero and plus infinity, but not infinity. And we consider the moral class um, R to the minus lambda, comma rho, the omega that we have seen, it's a specific type of generalized moral, by the way. Then we take the intersection with LP. Sorry. What's going on here? LP of omega. And we want to show, and then of course we have an intersection between two norm spaces. You know how to norm it. We can norm it in this way. We take F in this intersection. It's going to be the maximum. You could also take the sum if you wish, but in any case, the maximum. Let's take the maximum between the first norm, the norm of the first space. And then norm of the second space. So we have again a norm space, okay? And uh, we want to characterize and see that this is actually a um, generalized memory space. We now see, we now prove. That we have that such, that such intersection, let's write it in this way, such an intersection is again a generalized more space. Which has, we have to put a few lines of proof because this is not with this SLP, this is more of this SLP. Okay. So we prove uh, the following lemma, which says precisely what we have written there. So again, omega in our n, p, we allow it to be in one plus infinity, including infinity, lambda, zero plus infinity. And instead, 
And then we set uh, W lambda. Before we had W lambda rho. Now this is only W lambda R by definition, the function which is equal to R to the minus lambda if R is between zero and one. And instead uh, I put one at the zero if R is between one and plus infinity. So let's graph it. Again, we have a decreasing function, so then this is W lambda. So, okay. Then if rho is finite, this is important that it is not infinity, then our intersection, you remember this intersection that we had there. So M P um, R to the minus lambda rho omega intersection with P omega. This e equals the more the generalized more space with W lambda. And the corresponding norms are equivalent. The norms equivalent. So let's prove this. So <clears throat> first we assume that uh, an element is in here on the left hand side, and we show that as a consequence it would be belong to the right hand side. Then we take an element to the right hand side and we show that it is in the left hand side. So we start. So first let F in the intersection. So M P R to the minus lambda comma O. Sorry, here there is a minus lambda, okay? Minus omega intersection at P. Omega P should be up here, so anyway. Okay, so we need to estimate, and we want to show that it is in here. So we need to estimate, the, try to estimate. To show that it is in here on the right hand side, we try to estimate what F plus infinity W lambda P omega, which is the supremum, you remember? So we make some exercise as X comma R, R in omega times zero plus infinity W lambda of R. And then this is F LP. It's a section omega as always. Our goal to show that the right hand side is finite. And then we make a simple remark that uh, this interval here can be written as a union of the interval zero comma minimum between rho, because we don't know if rho is greater than one or less than one. Okay, and then union, the minimum, between rho and one, and plus infinity. So if you want to estimate this soup, it's enough you estimate the soup with rho in here, and the soup with rho in here, in this other interval, okay? So why is this remark interesting? Because here, we are below one, so we know that the W lambda of R is equal to R to the minus lambda. Here instead, here W lambda R, here I, I estimate it. So you see, this number, we do not know whether this number is smaller or bigger than or, or, or equal to one. 
either strictly smaller or, or equal to one. We do not know it, but uh, certainly we know that uh, this function here is decreasing as we observed before. So this is less or equal than W lambda, which is a certain number, minimum between what is it, rho and one. Okay. So we know that here this inequality holds, and here this inequality actually equality holds. Now we're going to exploit this information, okay? One moment. So <clears throat> we start uh, to estimate the supremum here. So the supremum now, supremum x comma r in omega times zero comma minimum between rho and one. W lambda R of F L P V X R intersection omega. And this is less or equal than. Okay, so here we said it's R to the minus lambda. So uh, you can write sup R to the minus lambda. And then F L P the XR intersection omega, right? And now here X, it's okay to stay XR in omega times. Here I should write this interval, but if I write a bigger interval, then I have a larger number. And here I decided to write a zero or because this is less than this, but this is nothing else but uh, F, Rho R to the minus lambda in omega. And this is, by definition, the norm of F in the space. Uh, sorry. Um, M, um, what power do you have here? R to the minus lambda. But then you truncate in uh, Rho. So we write O, yeah, we write P, and here in omega. So we have realized that, uh, sorry, here there is a probably, so sorry, maybe I haven't got to the wrong point, so let me see here again. So I want to estimate this in terms of this, so this was okay. We did it between rho Yes, 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 yes. Fine, 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 fine. Perfect. So assume that uh, as we have that F is in this intersection, then the norm in the space is finite, which means the norm in the space here is finite. And then the norm here is finite. This, this norm, this soup here is finite. As you remember, we still have to estimate, uh, so we estimated the soup with the, the radius in this interval, and we need the second interval, okay? So we are proceeding okay. And the soup now, x comma r in omega times, so here we consider the r's which we were between zero and the minimum, now instead we take from the minimum a rho comma one plus infinity and then we have w lambda r f l p x r uh intersection omega here we said that uh, we could uh, remember we said one moment ago that we could estimate w lambda in terms of this number so I put it out, so W lambda of minimum one comma one, because this is greater than this. And then you have the supremum of F L P E X R the section omega. X here was in omega and R was in, remember, minimum 
for the one plus infinity. But uh, this intersection is contained in omega. So that's less than W lambda mean rho comma one F LP on the entire set omega because this is bigger than this one, no matter what X and R are. Right? So again, if F belongs to this intersection, it means the norm in this space, the norm in this space here are finite. And uh, both these two suprema are finite, so then by definition, hence F plus infinity W lambda P less or equal than the maximum between one and this minimum multiplied by the norm of f in the intersection m r minus lambda rho p omega intersection of p, which is the maximum between the empty norm and the more norm. So we have proved and F is, since this is finite, because this is finite, F is contained in more W lambda in omega. Conversely, if F belongs to M W lambda in omega, then we have to show that we can estimate the norm in this Mori class and also in LP. So, so let's start. So assume then that it is in here and we should first consider the norm, the Mori norm, okay? This one here and try to show that it is uh, finite. Then let's write it, so F. Rho P omega by definition, this is the supremum as X comma R, R, well X is always in omega and the radius is between zero and rho. Then we have to put the weight, which is R to the minus lambda, we decided we will R to the minus lambda, F, LP, omega, I'm sorry, BXR, usual intersection omega, as always. Okay, and uh, now we try to estimate and uh, we realize that R, do you remember that the R to the minus lambda, it's always less or equal than W lambda. Oh, R. Uh, because you remember that uh, this is R to the minus lambda and instead uh, w, um, w lambda is this way. This is R to the minus lambda, and then one for W lambda. R minus lambda instead goes this way. So it's still low. And uh, so this is less or equal than the supremum in omega times zero R rho. W lambda R F L P E X R the section. Actually, we can take a bigger row, and this is the three quarters supremum, x r in omega times zero plus infinity, w lambda r, s l p, x r, the section omega. And this is precisely the um, Morin arm. W lambda. So, conclusion, if uh, F is in M, W lambda P omega, then this is finite, the right-hand side of the last inequality is finite, and therefore F belongs to this space M R to the minus lambda rho P. We still have to prove that if it is in LP, let's show, hence, let's put hence, F in 
and Atumanj Lamba. Sorry, Atumanj Lamba. Next we show that F is an LP. And to show that it is an LP, we have to distinguish two cases. Let P less than infinity and then P equal to infinity. Let's say that I will work out for you the case plus infinity. I'm sorry, less than less infinity. And I'll leave as an exercise the case P equal to infinity, which is anyway going to be in the notes. And I hope to I give you the notes in the first two lectures very, very quickly by the weekend or even later. Okay. And uh, so that's a start. So uh, we have to show that it is in a P. So you have to estimate uh, the LP norm, right? And what we do is that uh, we start uh, with a subset of omega. I should write here omega to show that it is an LP, but I start with the subset. Which subset? Let xi be any point in Rn. And I use uh, end of row in zero plus infinity. Actually, row is, a, we already know it. Uh, we have already introduced row. I don't have to write this because we already know it. We know I did two times. And here I integrate not on the whole of omega for the start, but in xi rho, comma, omega. And the idea is that no matter how you choose xi, for example, you could choose, for example, zero. And uh, I want to make an estimate which is uh, true for uh, a rho, and uh, for which rho? I do not want all rows, but it is enough for, for, for a rho from a point onward, okay? Actually, maybe I want to make sure that, uh, uh, so maybe I should not use, I should not use uh, the letter rho because rho has already been chosen, I am sorry. So let's uh, put here f, okay? I choose another letter because f rho is already involved, so I do not want it. So let's put f. So what we are going to do is, as I said, I fix a point xi, for example, xi equal to zero would be okay. And I show that we can find a uniform bound for this integral when s is greater or equal than a certain number, okay? And by virtue of that bound, I will conclude that by the monotone convergence theorem that this integral here is finite, okay? And I choose s in, I'm writing this estimate for s, for example, between one and plus infinity, but I could choose instead of one, two, it would be equally okay. Then here, I want to estimate this, right? So I should write, please do not write if you're coughing. I should, I could write here W lambda of one, for example. Um, sorry. So, uh, yes, so, so let's write this, let's write this. What I want is WS here, and this I would be sure that it is less or equal than the supremum as X comma R, R in omega times all numbers, positive numbers, because S is a specific positive number of W lambda R F L P D X R intersection omega, you can this. And then you put here the one for P. Because this what you wrote in the left hand side, oh, there is a one over P that, I'm sorry, there is a P here that uh, one over P, so let me check, I'm sorry, here is P not one over P, first of all, let me correct this. P. So I bring here P, I need a P here also, sorry. Right? So this is really trivial, right? And from this one, I divide left, I divide by W lambda, I'm sorry, this is always a non-zero sort of problem. W P lambda S 
and I write here, let me write a little bit. Uh, so it's this here. W lambda S, and I write here minus P, right? And so here, you simplify with this one, it's one, and uh, this is less or equal than, okay. Now, we said that S is between one and plus infinity, and we said that the W is a, a decreasing function. So I take the smallest value to have, uh, sorry, uh, maybe I, yeah, there is something that I don't like. Or between one and infinity. So, mm, so let me see in a moment. So, in a Oh, my God. So, I I have a mistake here, so. Almost it. Oh my goodness. Um, so I have this competition done somewhere. What the? So I forgot here to if I don't finish in two minutes in one moment I I will come to that on tomorrow because I cannot waste my time here. Because W and S is maybe I just have to take something else. So the assumption that here, let me go back to the assumption that maybe I'm just missing this. Next, we show that uh, the assumption is that F, okay, F is in there in the, in the W. Yeah, 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 because, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I am sorry, I apologize for this. Okay, so when S is going to be between one and infinity, then you have that uh, W at lambda S, here it is, is equal to one. And uh, so here you do not uh, need to mess up with the, this, so this is perfectly okay. So so. You, you, this equality here, so here you, you need to have equality, not only inequality. So you just did sometimes. So this is not useful. So here I can put one equal to one. It is, it is equal. Supreme x comma r times zero plus infinity. I apologize. We say in Italy, I got lost in the glass of water. That would be excellent. And we get to the P power. Because uh, this is true, you remember? So W and mm -hmm. Okay. But this is just uh, equal to F plus infinity. W lambda P omega. And this holds for OS greater or equal than one. 
Then you remember the monotone convergence theorem, but then since uh, let's write also this the function f to the p power times the character. This is the characteristic function. B xi f mega converges to f p. Here k i equal to one if x is in the set A, zero if x is in Rn minus A. Okay. And then the monotone convergence theorem implies that. Convergence theorem implies what? implies that, uh, let's write it explicitly, that the integral on omega of f to i equal to the supremum s greater or equal than 1, integral d xi comma s intersection omega f to the y, let's say, and then there is a p power less or equal than, um, by the way, here is a p power, let's do it forgot f plus infinity w lambda in omega the power p and this implies immediately that f p f norm p norm of f so that's f p omega that's what equal then f plus infinity w lambda p omega and the proof is, is finished in particular In P. Okay, so we have proved that so F is in the intersection of M R to the minus lambda rho to the intersection. How about if what well, P K is P equal to plus infinity exercise? Siemens. Argument is the same, only that you do not invoke the, um, the monotone convergence theorem, and you just make a simple remark on how the um, essential supremum on uh, on uh, this intersection. I'm sorry, the essential supremum on the entire omega is the supremum of the essential suprema on uh, this intersection when s is greater equal to one. It's a simple remark, okay? So this is the end of this proof. Okay, so I also want to, to make another remark. We do not use it immediately, but it will be used that if you wish an exercise, nothing else, that there is an important homogeneity property of the Moray spaces. So in case uh, we take omega equal to Rn, this is okay for Rn. Then uh, if you consider a function, a positive function f, so we take f of alpha dot. f of alpha dot means the function that takes x to f of alpha x, okay? So multiplication, okay? And uh, you make the norm of m r to the minus lambda p, in our n, it's okay in our n. This is equal to alpha to the lambda minus n over p, norm of f, m uh, to the minus lambda p. This is a relevant remark, and the proof is exercise on the suprema. It's an exercise for the first year calculus. Proof exercise on the definition definition of the supremum. This is for alpha, a number between zero and plus infinity. F as always, from the million to R, measurable. Okay. Also, I want to conclude this introductory section, let's say, with uh, a remark, uh, which is the, in the Pasha Samko, by the way, Pasha Samko, 
I don't remember exactly in which year, maybe in 2006 it was, has introduced, oh, by the way, Natasha Samko was originally from Rostov von Don, has introduced generalization. of more spaces, spaces, by replacing the Lebesgue measure. But I, uh, weighted measure. Okay, now I want to say a word, although we will actually use this word only later on vanishing generalized noise spaces. By now I just give the definition and we will use them soon. It will, it will really come up and know their power a little later. So, uh, definition, so what we mean. So again, omega subset of n. And uh, also we want omega open. We always keep one plus infinity. And the w await. You know that we like to include the case of zero also. The reason why we wait to include the zero also is because, as I said, I want to include those more right classes with that particular weight of W number, okay? And uh, then we have a, a generalized uh, that we define as generalized. Or vanishing, uh, more vanishing. Sometimes, or little. Although in the Russian school, for example, they use only vanishing. More space. With weight W. And exponent p. The subspace I make this one so I write M W P omega as before. And then here I add a comma and I put a zero. And this is the set of F in M. W P omega. So the space is contained in here, this model space, such that this limit has a row tends to zero of F all W P omega is zero. Now you ask why do I take this subspace here? Why do people take this subspace? As we shall see later on in the course. This condition is important because it allows you to approximate the Mari functions by smooth functions, okay? But we will come on this topic uh, in a couple of lectures or so. And uh, we always uh, think of M, obviously, is zero of B, omega as a subspace. For me, this means subspace, which means subset, plus then we take a linear combination here, it stays in here on the right-hand side, M, W P omega with the same norm. As in the right hand side. Which means this one. Okay. This is Generalized vanishing. 
But of course, you can take some specific values and make the corresponding uh, generation, right? In particular. If you take W equal to R to the minus lambda, you get the space M R to the minus lambda, comma zero, E omega subspace of M. But then you can also take the W equal to the W uh, rho lambda, you remember, and you get uh, and you get um, M R to the minus lambda comma rho comma zero P omega subspace of M R to the minus lambda P omega. And I forgot to go in zero plus infinity. Or you can also consider the case in which you have W equal to W lambda. In this case, we have the space M. We have the space, you remember, we proved it one moment ago, R to the minus lambda. Uh, what is it? P omega intersection and P comma rho. Remember that this was equal to M. Uh, what was it? W lambda P omega right? And uh, in this case, we have the corresponding little more, right? By the way, so this is the end quotation. You write, you said, uh, you see, this is very long. This is also kind of long. So we like to do this, lambda p, omega. People like to write this. This is shorter symbol than this one. And we have the corresponding. Vanishing model. Subspace, of course, of M. Okay. Define obviously, so you take a set of functions with li this limit zero, in which you have this replaced uh, with the various Ws that you choose to, to consider. Another section, trivial. By the way, now it's 40. So uh, uh, do you wish to make a five minutes or, or break? We make five minutes of break, okay? Um, Mrs. Pichugina? Um, uh, it's me. I think no. You do not want it. Okay, let's not make uh, no, 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 no break. Trivia and non trivia. Generalized more spaces. Okay, so now we under we, we try to understand whether a more space is trivial or so at least in uh, trivial means that it reduces only to the function zero, okay? So let's see first the sufficient condition that it is a proposition. You're going to use for data. And uh, P as usual, 
between one and plus infinity. Lambda, I'm sorry, not lambda w, the weight, uh, sorry, the weight lambda as usual is between zero plus infinity. And here I, I let it be zero, as I said many times, but I want to add some conditions on the zeros. So I do not want, not only I do not want the function which is identical, but uh, we assume that, uh, assume that there exists, this symbol means exists, as zero between zero and plus infinity, so a positive number, su such that WR is different from zero from for all R in zero or zero. So in other words, if I can plot here, here in a right neighborhood of zero, the W has to be up, it cannot be touched zero. Then it can do what it wants. Okay. And that The limb soup should be upper limit, if you wish, and to zero of WR R to the N over P. So P has been introduced, yes. Uh, this is plus infinity. You remember that when this happens in particular, you have a sequence of R's such that this product tends to plus infinity and the sequence tends to zero. This is the information we need in a few minutes. Okay, so of course, a matter of elementary calculus. Then, okay, assume that and that. So I'm saying that with this condition here, then the Mori space, the generalized Mori space, W, P, again, becomes zero. So there are no non-trivial functions there, only the function zero. Let's have a show a proof. So we make some exercise on these norms. And uh, what I want to do to show triviality is to use the Lebesgue differentiation theorem and I need the local integrable functions. So I make this remark that I will make also later on. Let the so let's take a function f, which belongs to this Mori space b omega. We want to show to show that w is zero. That f f f not w. w is the one. You remember, means zero almost everywhere, okay? And uh, since we know that uh, the Moray, the omega, generalized Moray, is certainly contained in LP of the XR intersection omega for all R greater than zero, right? Otherwise, the Moray norm, which is that supreme, you remember, would be infinity. Then we have, you see all compact sets are con contained in some of these balls intersection omega for R sufficiently large. Then F, it's also in LP local. We will come on to this issue again later on in the lectures, maybe today. But do you know that LP local is contained in a long local? Omega. Local means on the compact subsets. I'm saying that it is a P summable on a compact subset, why? Right? Because each compact subset is contained in one of these intersections for R very big, right? Therefore, it's LP there. Okay, so, but since it belongs to L1 local, then you have the, by the Lebesgue, Lebesgue differentiation theorem. Here we have we 
and what. Remember, we recall that result in the first lecture yesterday. The limit r tends to zero, the average integral of on the ball of fy dy. Actually, it's already on here, so I can take one. It will be true, but yeah, I need this y equal to f of x in algebras for almost all x in a million. This is standard real analysis. This result is contained, roughly speaking, in all real analysis textbooks. And uh, so, what is to show that this is zero almost everywhere. But we know by the, the, uh, the back differentiation theorem that uh, this equals to this limit. So what we shall do is to show that this limit is zero almost everywhere. This is our idea, not our idea, I'm sorry. The classical idea. And uh, of course we want to use the information that it is locally actually in LP, so we can estimate this L1 norm in terms of an LP norm by using the Hurlock inequality. Okay, this is an old trick. And uh, we note, so we now try to try to show that the limit in the right in the left hand side inside equals zero almost everywhere. This is what we so we estimate, right? So we're using the Hilder by the Hilder inequality. Inequality. We have. Okay, first of all, you know, average integral is called f dy dy. This is equal to one over the measure to the back measure of the XR. This is just the definition of the symbol, nothing else, no mathematics. Sorry, F to Y. Okay. Now this is the L1 norm, right? So I estimate the L1 norm with the Hilbert inequality. Then I write what here. You remember how to measure the domain. The power one over what is this power? This power is one minus one over p, and then you multiply by the LP norm um, of the XR. Since here you have one, and here you have dividing, so this is not a color. So this will be probably this. And uh, this equal. We compute the measure here to the minus one would be right. So denominator, you have the measure to the one over p. The volume, the unit ball to the one over p times the radius to the n over p f. I'm sorry, um, my let's do step by step and the, the XR. Okay, but of course, if R is small enough, let's use another color. If R is small enough, so that the VXR is contained in Omega. This is equal to one over 
P, R to the end of a P, and then you have F and P, B, X, R. Intersection may, they're the same, right? Because the ball is very small, or the radius is very small. Components. Now I multiply here by W, R to the minus one, and I multiply by W, O, R. So, okay, if you remember, we take R in zero, zero. Because you remember if that, if you get out of the signal, well, it may be zero, right? I do not want that. And this is less or equal than um, then, okay, I bring this one to the denominator. So I have omega n, one over p, wr, r to the n over p. You remember our sufficient condition was on this function here, right? And then you have the supremum as x, comma, r, r. So I take here, I x so far, I made no assumption, just it was a point of omega, right? So here I take the supremo x in omega times, and here, why not? With large abundance, I take it in um, zero plus infinity of wr f lp xr in a section of omega. And uh, what is this? This is equal to one over omega n one over p, w r, r to the n over p, I'm just copying. And this is nothing else that uh, the number f plus infinity w p omega, which is finite, right? By the way, it's just the more I know. Now we go back to our assumption, do you remember? Since remember our assumption, our assumption was the limit, the superior limit, the supreme, or mean sub, whatever, of uh, WR uh, in over P, plus, plus infinity. I told you that it is, uh, if you have this information, tells you that there is a sequence which converges to zero, on which this function here goes to plus infinity. Then, element anti-calculus, and we have, then we have the, the limit, the, the inferior limit, as R goes to zero, of one over WR, R N over P, is zero. This is equivalent to saying that, look, as I said, for a sequence which goes to zero, this would be, be for a suitable sequence which goes to zero, this it would exist a sequence going to zero such that this goes to infinity. And when you go to the reciprocal goes to zero, that this limit increases zero. This is an elementary calculus by the way. And now we are done. Why? Because then fx hence for almost all x in omega, we have. You remember that the, the back differentiation theorem said that, that f is the limit for almost all of them. r tends to zero, intersection of these r, fy, dy. This back for almost all of them, not all of them, but almost all of them. But you remember? that when the limit exists, it's also equal to the inferior limit. Right? This is cross one. But we have estimated this term here.
right? That's what we did here. Remember that this is nothing else but we just put the inequality. But by assumption, because this and uh, hence for almost all x in omega and thus m Vo comma zero. I'm sorry. Vo w. Sorry. Vo w. Omega. End of the game. And uh, we have some interesting examples. This. Examples. We take uh, w. You remember our favorite W's are R to the minus lambda. Um, I'm sorry, to the, no, we have the exponent, uh, sorry, W to the minus N over P. Um, then, I'm sorry, I am sorry, so, so take lambda, Greater than n over p. Yes, this is a good case. Then the limb sup is r tends to zero of uh, r minus lambda r to the n minus p over p. So equal to in soup of uh, r to the n over p minus lambda r times to zero and this is this exponent here is less than zero so this limit here is the superior limit but actually limit uh, it's plus infinity and this implies that uh, m r to the minus lambda the omega is going to be equal to zero. It's a trivial uh, space. An example again. So this was it. Then you take lambda rho r. Remember w equal to wr equal to this one. Remember this was the weight then here. The, again, lambda is always greater than p. Or between zero and infinity. And again, you can see r tends to zero of r to the minus lambda r n over p. Sorry. W lambda. I'll go R equal to plus infinity. Otherwise, the corresponding space M R to the minus lambda comma rho B omega is trivial. And the same also for the third example. We take as W W lambda R, always lambda greater than n over P. This was, remember the way it's in this way. Then the new super. R tends to zero, W lambda R, R to the n over P. Again, this plus infinity. Five, the space that we have called M lambda lambda. If you so remember that this was equal to this was equal to 
So it's equal to M. So all these spaces are three, okay? Okay. So, um, they're all three, yes. Uh, is there any sufficient condition? Excuse me, here I have a technical problem. Just one second only. Just one second. And uh, so now, now let's see, now introduce. Okay, so let me see, next. So here, what we have done is introducing a condition of triviality. So we said that if this loom soup was in plus infinity, then the space is trivial. Let's introduce one of the possible conditions of noon triviality. And uh, to do this, I, I follow, next we introduce, Condition of non triviality of non triviality of non triviality um, for generalized more spaces. And here we follow. Paper of uh, Burian Cup. Yeah. And also, I want to cite the uh, Burian Cup. Design. Tradico. It's a recent paper, maybe I have written somewhere here. What year? I don't have the page. And um, uh, we follow them and uh, we introduce uh, this definition. Let P one plus infinity. And uh, we denote uh, let WP infinity be the set of measurable functions W such that there exists T1 and T2. Such that essential supremal of the WR on the interval of infinity. So let's say on a half line, this is finite and the essential supremo instead of the right neighbor to zero or zero to two of the weight that we are hardly element P, the same function we considered on second ago. Before we said that if this mean soup when R goes to zero is plus infinity, then you have triviality. But here, we assume that this is less than plus infinity. Okay, so the class WP infinity is made with functions which satisfy these two property theorem. Okay, so the theorem, or proposition is a theorem, which I do not prove, but in any case, that proof can be found in papers of these authors, that P in one plus infinity Maybe also it's okay here. And then on the subset of an open. If you take a weight in the class WP infinity, then this more space generalized more space. Non zero. It's a non trivial information. Okay. 
So this is what for, for triviality and non-triviality. And then I want to do some elementary embeddings. into the text spaces. Then later on, we'll see also embeddings into more spaces, more general embeddings, okay? But uh, for the start, let's do this very elementary one to, for today, let's say. And uh, the first the proposition implies that uh, functions in this space here are p locally sample, okay? So that uh, we got always subset of our n omega open p in one plus infinity and uh, w from uh, say zero plus infinity to zero plus infinity. Then we have these two elementary statements. If uh, so. Assume that xi is an arbitrary point of omega. You fix it as you wish. And then you take an r, which is greater than zero, so let's say in zero plus infinity. This is really trivial, you will see. It. Then the map. The restriction map, we should say. Restriction map. Um, from um, the, the generalized moray to LP in uh, the XI omega and it takes F to what? F restricted to the XI. No, 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 we didn't say X with XI, sorry. Omega is linear and continuous. In particular, if you take a Mori function, Generalized more function restricted to in omega. When you restrict it to um, omega intersection of all, then you get an LP function. That's what we're saying. And uh, there is also an inequality, which is, by the way, completely trivial. For all Mori functions, generalized Mori functions. This is the first and as an immediate consequence of this. With an immediate consequence, you have the embedding in 20 local. I do not know if you know this notation here, P omega. It's continuously embedded into P local. But uh, of course, once you have this point, I, I is immediate. Why? Because every compact set is contained in the intersection of a sufficiently large ball with omega. So once you have i, i, I is for free, let's say. So the proof is just an exercise of one line, nothing else. As a matter of fact, just a remark on the definition. So you see, if you take uh, the product WR, and then you multiply by the LP norm on B xi r, the section omega. By definition, this is less or equal than the supremum when x r is in omega times the zero plus infinity right of W r F LP B x r 
intersection radius, right? Because here you have a specific choice on the radius, it's R. You have a specific point of the point, xi in the left hand side. Here you have all of them, but this is well, WP omega. And And okay, so this inequality says that the embedding of uh, the more into the LP, not embedding, it's a restriction. Okay, it's a restriction. Restriction map of I. Is continuing. And I, I is a major consequence if K contains the K compact inside an arbitrary point of omega, as we said before, just to take, you can take. Are greater than zero big enough. So that compact set K is contained in the ball with some center xi in radius R intersection omega. And the LP norm K is equal to the LP norm. And we decide our future value, right? No, you are. It's not more. Right? This is just. Right? It's in quantitative issue. But this says exactly a more properly diffused restriction. Okay. So okay. This restriction, this means restriction, right? Continuous from and WP omega to and pk for k containing k compact. But this means exactly as the map from WP omega to head block omega. It takes F to F. It continues. Because saying that this map here is continuous means for all compact sets, this map here is continuous. Okay. Okay, so we did this. Okay, so. In two words, what we have said in this statement is that the more functions MW, P, Omega are contained in the locally summable. And it is natural, quite a natural question to ask if we can remove local. So whether the more functions with exponents W, P are actually in LP, not only in LP log, right? This is really a natural question. So this is the end here. So we now ask, ask whether 
means if the functions of MWP can be in MP only not only in MP lock, which we have put at the moment ago. To answer this question, we have the following proposition, which is also very limited. Right. Mega subset of n. Then we take p in one plus infinity. We take w from zero uh, plus infinity. How we take it, we can write to zero plus infinity. But then, then I ask. So I exclude the zero here in this statement. Okay, write this simple. If the W is the infimum, for short, because I don't want to, you know, write all this stuff at the time. So I want this to be positive, strictly the beta. So if the W is just the infimum of the weight, okay? We want it to be strictly positive. So in our examples, for example, R to the minus lambda, not okay. The weights uh, W, remember, W lambda rho, would they were, you know, zero after a certain row, not okay, because the infimum there is zero. But instead, I, I want this infimum positive, like, for example, in the weight W lambda, okay? So the answer then, um, I'm sorry, wait, B omega is continuously embedded into LP omega and F LP omega eta w magnifying. F model WP omega for F in the model. Okay, so one line of proof. Okay, now it's 30, but I still want to, if you agree, to make an extra minute because I have to take two supports for my computer here. I wasted one minute of lecture. And uh, so let's prove this. So let uh, F and M W at least to start proof, okay, which is very elementary. Right? Then the same argument we played before, if you remember, then uh, W R uh, then the integral O to the P power. It's put the P power F P X R. The section on the dy. Let's recall that the supreme r in zero plus infinity. W r f l p p x r the section of media p and uh, then. Also, by the way, uh, let, let's take P less than infinity first, okay? Now I divide by W of PR. In here I have W of P to the minus P, right? But this is, remember that uh, um, W has an infimum, okay, which is strictly positive. Then here we can take W the infimum by the infimum is this one, minus b. Because the smaller is the denominator, the bigger is the fraction, right? And then here, this is nothing else but the f m w p omega norm to the p power. And of course, you can simplify here. And uh, 
you see by the monotone convergence theorem that uh, you have that uh, this is for all R, right? And uh, here we can fix an R, right? And then uh, you have that uh, F P L P P X R inside. Omega, which is by the way the integral on omega which is FP equal to if you wish. By the monotone convergence of the This exists always because this is increasing the R. No, I'm sorry, not R, but this is it. And uh, this is increasing in R8, so it's dominated by the right hand side. And uh, as a consequence of this inequality here, we finish the proof, right? Because we prove this. And this concludes the proof. So I so extra minutes, three to four, that I wasted to take the support of my computer, I apologize. So this is the end of today's lecture, right? And uh, we meet, as Professor Karapetians has said, on uh, September 18th. But I hope that earlier than that, I will be able to put uh, the notes of this part of the lecture online. So, the, well, actually, not online. I will give the PDF to Professor Karapetians and I will give it to you. Okay? The PDFs of the two lectures. So, you have, let me also I put some in here. Okay. Do you have questions or remarks? I think no. Thank you very much, Professor. Okay, Marcel, yes, Marcel, um, okay. <laughs> Next Wednesday. Okay, yes, we meet on um, on the 18th, okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bye, thank, you. thank you for listening, for your patience, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye, goodbye.